Before we start on this video, I'd like to give a big thank you to my patrons, Lady Zubat, Kuma Lewis, Haley Rose, Anti Zoo Detective, Tim Bob, Busy Robot Hands, Anthony Ruth, Diesel, Lucid Creator, Hateful Tate, Spoken Mind, and Shiloh Connor. Without them, most of this content would not be possible. I would also like to give a big thank you to the artist who does my character stills, Zero. A link to his Twitter account will be in the description below. As well as a big thank you to the artist who has contributed to the background that you now see on this video, Shiloh Connor. A link to their Twitter will be in the description below. With all of that out of the way, let's start the video. In the 10 months since the pilot was released, has been Hotels been taking social media by storm? From fan-made characters, to Discord servers, to music videos, and even the dreaded Twitter roleplay aspects, the show has erupted out onto the internet landscape and has become nearly as much a full-fledged fandom as any other you may expect to see. Despite this, it doesn't seem to have the same level of respect, big air quotes around that word, mind you, as more established fandoms like the furry fandom or the brony fandom. I've considered why that may be, and from what I can tell, it stems from the perception that Has Been Hotel is LOL SO RANDOM ADULT FUNNY SWEAR WORD HER <laughs> CARTOON FUNNY Upon the release of the pilot almost a year ago, this would be a fair criticism, and I'd probably agree with it. However, we've seen small bits of the world become more fleshed out over time. In this video, we'll be exploring how this seemingly absurd comedy might be more complex than we've been led to believe, and we'll do so by examining a character who's, no pun intended, revealed a great deal of himself to us. Angel Dust is a character that seems to play a pivotal role in the lore thus far. The hotel that seeks to rehabilitate sinners accepted him as their first project. Seems arbitrary at a glance, considering everyone in hell could be considered an ideal candidate, but out of everyone we've seen yet, Angel Dust specifically feels like the one character who has the best ability to be redeemed. Now why do I believe that? Well, today we're going to explore why I've been led to this conclusion using the information made readily accessible to us. I'll be pulling from the initial pilot episode of Has Been Hotel, as well as the recent music video, Addict, to dive just a bit deeper beneath the surface of Angel Dust and explore the damaged character that caused me to find myself invested in seeing where this project goes. To start, I'm going to need to lay out how I'll be deconstructing this character. K.M. Wieland, author of the novel Creating Character Arcs, The Masterful Author's Guide to Uniting Story Structure, describes many pivotal aspects necessary to create a compelling character, and I'll be looking at Angel Dust through the lens of four of these criterion, in the following order. 1. His Wound, which K.M. Wieland describes it as an event in the character's past that haunts them. Often the wound will be something shocking and traumatic. 2. What he wants. 3. The lie he believes, which is a deeply believed misconception of either himself, the world around him, or both that is a byproduct of the wound. And lastly, 4. What he needs. Now, with all the preamble out of the way about the sources I'll pull from and how I plan to do this, let's begin. Part 1. His Wound. Angel Dust as a character was difficult to pin down just off the pilot of the show. There wasn't much information to go off about what caused him to behave the way he does outside of prostitute, drug addict, and mayhem enthusiast, and it did give the character a seemingly one-dimensional persona. He does what he does because he does. That was all the explanation we'd received at the time, and it was a fair bit of criticism to be given to the show. However, if we examine some of the added context provided within the music video Addict, that we can peel back a few layers to examine a potential wound of the character, that wound being he was sexually assaulted by his former pimp. When we apply this context to a few things presented in the pilot, such as his insistence that it not be publicized that his services are being rendered on the professional level, it gives his motives more depth. The immediate explanation offered by the pilot is that he doesn't want Charlie finding out about his extracurricular activities. However, when you reevaluate this with the knowledge of that traumatic event, it can suggest his motive is because he doesn't want his attacker knowing he's engaged in this behavior once again, absent his attacker's consent. I mean, his attacker was his pimp, if you recall, which means we can infer a level of anxiety that may be present at the idea of his pimp finding out more than Charlie finding out, as he has no real connection to Charlie on any personal level at the time. Furthermore, when we examine the character under the lens of having this wound, it explains more about the hesitancy to let his guard down in front of others, such as when he appears to want to console Charlie, but decides better of it and walks away. Part 2. What he wants. Angel Dust doesn't appear to have many goals outside of... Angel Dust. Bit of an on-the-nose metaphor, I suppose, but one that's 
apt on a number of levels. Through the interactions he has with others, Angel Dust constantly presents himself as a devil may care individual who is unaffected by the world around him. It doesn't seem to matter if the world acts in perfect harmony or anarchy runs rampant. All that matters is that Angel Dust is giving off a presentation that it's being done his way. It's fairly obvious through the interactions he has in the pilot, as well as through some of the lyrics in Addict, specifically the following. Till death do us part, but we're already past that phase. This is a brand new start, and I think I deserve some praise for the way that I am, despite having overdosed and ending up comatose. I don't give a damn, I've let my emotions go, fuck being a sober hoe. This is the mantra, this is my life, you're playing with now till the end of the night. Surrounded by fire, passion ignites, ahead of that heaven and hell a hell of a high. Angel Dust's lyrics suggest that his circumstances and the situations others have put him through, or ones he may have put himself through, don't matter. It hasn't changed who he is at his core, and rather than crumbling beneath the weight of the pain that would cause others to shatter, he's risen above it all. However, in my opinion, the reason this falls into the category of what he wants is because it stands as a facade. The presentation of being unaffected is to stop anyone from knowing the level a lot of his suffering has affected him. Part 3. The Lie He Believes What makes this character complex to me is this aspect above all else. As stated previously, the lie a character believes is a misconception about either themselves, the world around them, or both that is a byproduct of the wound. In Angel Dust's case, this was the aspect that caused me to genuinely feel both sympathy towards this character and feel invested in this show. And the lie Angel Dust believes, in my opinion, can be summed up in three words. I deserved it. As many have pointed out, Has Been Hotel takes place in hell. There have been thousands across the internet who've been pointing out all the signs that say hell or 666 on them, or pointed out the giant pentagram in the sky, and treated as though it's just meant to hammer this into our heads. What some people have not taken into account is that those signs aren't just being shoved in our faces, but they're being shoved into the faces of the characters who exist inside of the show, too. What? Something we thought was put in just to constantly remind us of something is actually also supposed to constantly remind the characters of something? No way! Joking aside, the fact remains that Angel Dust is a victim of sexual assault, but the assault took place in hell. The level of conflicting emotions that would occur in somebody as they struggle with that kind of trauma while constantly being told, you're a terrible person who deserves to suffer by the entire world around them would drive most people nearly insane. Angel Dust is constantly reaffirmed that suffering is his entitlement by the reality he faces in death, and by proxy his surroundings reaffirm that his attack was something he deserved. I want to quickly point out, I would never imply any victims of sexual assault are at fault for their attack, and anyone who believes something to this effect is a fucking dick. What I am saying is that the circumstances Angel Dust lives in, or rather spends eternity in, offer nothing but an implication that he's a bad person who's entitled to the bad things that happen to him. Moreover, this belief that all people in hell are bad people forces Angel Dust to accept the idea that he cannot confide in anyone around him. His attacker was somebody who had also been labeled as wicked as him, and operating under the assumption that everyone else is equally as bad and would never provide any comfort or sympathy is what he believes as being the only way he can protect himself from being a victim again. Part 4. What he needs. What we see in some of the visuals of Addict, as well as in the final 40 seconds of the song, is Angel Dust isolating himself from others. In most scenes, he's performing with the mask secured, and this juxtaposed beside the visuals of himself in isolation gives a clear picture of what he as a character needs. In the outro of the song, the lyrics go as follows. I'm addicted to the sorrow, when the buzz ends by tomorrow. There's another rush of poison flowing into my veins, giving me a dose of pleasure that resides by the pain. I'm addicted, I'm dependent, looking awesome, feeling helpless. I know I'm raising Cain with every highway in hell, maybe things won't be so terrible inside this hotel. Angel Dust constantly keeps people at an arm's length. Wanting others to accept the facade he puts on is genuine, but this facade comes at the cost of what he needs, the ability to cope. As a character, I believe what he truly needs is to learn to let people in, to allow them to see the cracks and fractures behind what he wants them to see. 
Trauma is a difficult thing to cope with, and understanding where Angel Dust's trauma has come from and how it might be affecting his worldview, it's natural that somebody would need to confide in somebody, to be vulnerable and not have to force a confident smile from a place where there truthfully isn't one. But Angel Dust doesn't appear to be able to do that. Rather, his desire to be seen as unaffected costs him what he needs in this case. Conclusion I'd like to end this video by saying, none of this is definitive. I could be connecting dots that don't exist and only connect because I'm forcing them to. And this show could have plenty of other things in store for Angel Dust as a character that suggest many alternatives to what I presented here. However, the goal of this video was to suggest that perhaps this show has more depth than we gave it credit for at launch. When we apply context given from even one more place, when the show expands its scope and lets us see beyond a self-contained pilot episode, we can begin to reevaluate how we see it and start to find the depth that most of us wanted from the start. My belief with this show is that it has far more potential than I had given it credit for in the past year, and seeing more about Angel Dust and being able to better understand why he might behave the way he does has me hoping this project continues, because I think a story like his is one that's worth telling at the very least. Hey, so if you're listening to this, thanks for watching the full video. Um, this was my first attempt at sort of a character analysis style video, so, you know, definitely let me know what you thought of it in the comments. You know, I, I just kind of needed a break from talking about drama and people being degenerates on the internet, and this seemed like a good palate cleanser. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, leave a like. If you didn't, leave a dislike, I guess. Uh, I'm sorry if you didn't like it. Uh, but you know, uh, thanks for watching anyway. There's links to my social media in the description below, my Twitter, um, my Discord server. I'm starting to become more active in my own server. You'd think I'd have been active from the start, but well, I'm just starting now. Anyway, I'll catch you guys later.